Hey there internet friends, uh, this is a bit of an apology video. Um, I, I thought I covered some of these uh, hardware devices in my previous videos, uh, but managed to cut those entire sections out, which was really dumb. So, uh, going to do a super quick one on these two devices that I have here. Um, one of them pretty good, one of them not so good. Um, but these are uh, color emitters or color probes, devices that can actually uh, read the color information from screens. Uh, and then that's what we've been using in all these videos up to date. So lots and lots of options on the market, some real expensive, some not so expensive. Um, this is a uh, data color Spider 4, which unfortunately uh, the accuracy of it has drifted quite a bit. And there's some good discussion on Twitter um, about uh, these color emitters and, and whether or not you have to recalibrate them over time. Uh, and due to the, uh, the the photosensitive chips inside them and how they work and how they, they do uh, degrade over time, sometimes you do have to recalibrate these things. Uh, what you'd do there is you'd find someone who has a very expensive photospectrometer, which is a different device. It's a device with a um, little crystal inside, breaks the, the light spectrum up into different pieces and, and uh, measures uh, actual photons uh, in a much uh, more sophisticated way. Uh, but obviously the cost of those devices goes up. So where you've got sort of this is in the one to $200 range and this is in the uh, two to $300 range, uh, photospectrometers can sort of start at like five grand, go up to 10 grand, maybe even more, depending on, on what industry they target uh, and how accurate they get. Um, and they're great devices, just, you know, well outside the sort of budget of, of most retro gamers, certainly outside of my budget. Um, so yeah, this, this device... Um, it was good, I guess, while it worked, and it worked for quite a while. Um, it belonged to a studio, um, and it broke, and they sort of said, hey, can you look at it and, uh, and try and fix it? And I just said, yeah, it's drifted too much, so it's, it's junk now, like it's not useful to anyone. Um, but yeah, the, the Data Color uh, series of devices, this is the Spider device. The Spider uh, Model 2, 3, and 4 all look the same. They all have this kind of shell. Um, there's a little... Uh, sensor on the back here that can pick up ambient light to tell, um, I'm not sure if it actually picks up color temperature, I think it does, I think these two sensors pick up both ambient light color temperature uh, as well as color brightness which can factor into how you calibrate certain things especially when you're doing um, projectors and whatnot. Um, so yeah but anyway that device sort of sits up on your CRT. Um, in here uh, is the little photosensitive cell that picks up the light um, so you know if you've got a big CRT like this Stick it on the CRT. Um, there's a little uh, cord hanging off the back with a weight, and that weight can move around, so you can sort of throw that over the back of your CRT. Um, yeah, and you just uh, use that with the any software, the HCFR or DisplayCal or whatever you're using, CalMan, all those sorts of things. These will work with them. Um, they usually come with their own software. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like the software that comes with these devices. I tend to throw it out and use the open source stuff because it's a lot better. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's a, a type of probe that's out there. Um, I think the current model from Data Color is the Spider X, um, and from what I can tell on the spec sheet, the Spider X doesn't work with CRTs. It's LCD and OLED only, um, which is a bit of a bummer. Like I can't verify that. There's there's no real um, information about whether it does or doesn't. There's just an absence of information about CRT use. So given that a, a CRT is a refresh based display, um, and OLEDs and LCDs aren't. Uh, what it could mean is that they've taken out the electronics that deal with refresh-based uh, displays, all the firmware or whatever it is. So, um, I, yeah, don't know about the Spider Color, the Spider X uh, from Data Color. Uh, this one is the um, the Color Monkey display, uh, which I picked up off eBay secondhand. Uh, it's the same OEM form factor as the i1 Pro, um, and there's a couple of different. Um, color emitters that use this form factor. There's the um, Calman ship there, SpectraCal line. Oh, it's, it's sorry, not Calman. It's uh, portrait displays. They're called these days. Ship their uh, SpectraCal devices, which use the same sort of form factor. So interesting little form factor. You've got uh, there's a mount there, so you can actually mount this thing um, up if you want to point it at like a projector or something like that. This is a diffuser, so you can get some ambient light measurements through the diffuser. Um, you can you can pop the diffuser up. Uh, and move it out of the way and then you can use the diffuser as a sort of a stand if you like as well but then there's a whopping big lens here and inside uh, there is the little chip that picks up the uh, the light that comes in and does all the measurements um, so 
yeah, I think this is a better quality device and all the OEMs based off this are a little bit better quality. They certainly don't drift as poorly over time, but all of them do drift over, you know, a decade or so. Um, so you can get them recalibrated or, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they're sort of cheap, so you can get rid of them and get new ones, I guess, as well as another option. Uh, but uh, as I said, it is it is getting a bit concerning that they're not supporting CRTs anymore. So that's a bit of a worry. Um, although from what I can tell, the um, the replacement models for these, um, which are now aimed at HDR televisions, so getting into the Rec 2020 color spaces for the 4K and 8K standards, uh, they still support CRTs so far, which is good news for us. Um, so, so same sort of thing, just a little weight on the back of it, um, and you can sort of uh, squeeze that and move the weight along the cable, which is nice, um, lets you hang it over the edge of the CRT, same thing as before, right? So you, you pop that back, that's the big lens, there's a little sort of I can't really pick it up because my lighting's terrible. A little rubber feet there, uh, and that just sits up on your CRT. Um, and you want it flush against the CRT. You don't want it sort of on an angle. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and flush. It picks up all that light. Um, and yeah, nice big lens on that one that really helps it uh, see a lot more compared to uh, this guy, I feel. Um, but yeah, good little unit. Um, the uh, x right folks make another Color Monkey device called the Color Monkey Smile. Um, which is in a different form factor. It's sort of more like a hockey puck kind of shape. Um, again, I don't think that supports CRTs. I can't see any of the documentation that says it supports CRTs. A bit of a bummer because it is quite a cheap device. Um, so that would be perfect for our use as retro gamers where we don't want to spend thousands or tens of thousands. We just want to, you know, a device in the sort of the 100 to $200 range is pretty acceptable for the sorts of accuracy that we need. Um, that would be a really great option. However, uh, these guys are on eBay. A lot of folks selling these to move to the HDR models now. Um, so they are sort of in a reasonable price. Um, definitely recommended to get one of these or any in that sort of OEM style. Um, but all of them, yeah, just you know, USB plug at the back, plug into your laptop, uh, use the open source software that we've been using the whole time. Um, and they're all uh, pretty easy to use as far as just plug and play. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll get back onto some uh, more calibration videos pretty soon, uh, and also an interesting little video on a using a Raspberry Pi as a test pattern generator, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Bye.